Hello and welcome to another maths lesson. Now today we're going to be taking a look back at number bonds and specifically at number bonds to 10. Now you may be thinking, well hang on a second, I remember doing number bonds to 10 right the way back at the start of year one. And you'd be right, you did start learning them in year one. So why are we looking at them when we're right at the end of year two? Well, the first reason is just that they're really important to keep practicing. But really what we're going to be looking at today is how you can take the information, the facts that you know, your number bonds, and apply them to other calculations and other situations. And we're going to look at today how you can use your number bonds as a really helpful way to answer questions in your head and to answer them efficiently and quickly without having to do lots of work. So we'll do a flashback four to get started and then we'll have a look at today's learning. So today we're going to have a look at number bonds and we're focusing on number bonds to 10 today because number bonds to 10 are a really useful set of facts to know that can help us in loads and loads of different calculations. So have a look on the screen. I've got all the number bonds to 10 represented. You can see here that the different colours represent different parts that add together to make 10. So let's have a think about how we can use these number bonds to help us with our calculations. Now just before we move on, it might be worth you pausing here and just checking that you know all of these number bonds and that you know them really quickly. Let's have a look at our first example then. We're going to be thinking a lot today about mental calculations, which means being able to do a calculation in your head without having to write anything down. So let's have a look at this calculation. 38 add 12. Straight away we might be thinking, oh well both of these are two digit numbers and I might be thinking, oh I need to do the column addition method or maybe I need to do a bar model or draw something out to help me. But actually if we use what we know uh, from our number bonds then this becomes a lot more straightforward because we know actually that we can use the 2 add 8 equals 10 number bond because here we've got an 8 in the ones and in 12 we've got a 2 in the ones. So as soon as we know that 8 and 2 makes 10, well that's one 10, then we've got another 10 here, that makes 20, and then three more 10s gets us to 50. So without having to write anything out, we've used a number bond to 10, 8 add 2, we've done that part of the calculation really quickly, and then it's just a case of adding 10s, which is much more straightforward. Let's have a look at another example. 24 add 58. Now you might be thinking, hmm, I can't see any number bonds to 10 here. And you're right, but we can still use what we know from our number bonds to help us. Let's use the 2 add 8 number bond again. Now we know that 2 add 8 equals 10. And in this calculation here, in the 1s, we are doing 4 add 8. So here's how we could think about it. We're doing 8 add 4. And you can see I've got the 8 in green and the 4 in blue. Now we know that 8 add 2 equals 10. So if we start on 58 and we just add the 2 more, then we'll get to the next 10, which is 60. And then we can just add the 2 that we've got left. So we get to 62. So rather than having to do 8 and 4 straight away in our head, which we might be able to do, we can just quickly count on 2 more will get us to 60 and then another 2 will get us to 62. Now we're on 62, all we've got left is to add 2 more 10s, so we can count up 72, 82, and we're on 82. So can you see how we've used a number bond, 8 add 2, to help us with the calculation and just worked it through step by step, so rather than having to do a column addition, actually we can work that out step by step in our head. Let's have a look at another example. This one is 64 add 25. Now again, you might be thinking, hmm, I can't spot a number bond to 10 there. But let's see whether we could use the 5 add 5 number bond to help us with this calculation. Actually, 4 add 5 is very close to 5 add 5, isn't it? We've got 4 in the ones here and 5 in the ones here. So if it was 5 add 5, it would be 10, but 4 is 1 less than 5, so 4 add 5 makes 9. Well, now we just need to do 6 tens add 2 tens, and that makes 80. So we've got our answer, 89. Now, you might have been able to work that out 
in your head anyway. You might just know what 4 add 5 is. But if you didn't, knowing your 5 add 5 number bond gave you a way to work that out quickly rather than having to count on or write anything down. Let's have a look at another example. This time this is a word problem. AJ buys a ball for £4, a hat for £6 and an ice cream for £2. What if we wanted to work out how much AJ had spent altogether? Well, we've got three numbers here, 6, add 4, add 2. Now, we could start counting, we could count on our fingers, we could start drawing things out, but actually there's a really simple way of thinking about this question, using the 4, add 6, or 6, add 4 number bond. We've got three numbers, but two of them add together to make 10, 6 and 4 pounds. So straight away we know we're on 10 pounds, and then we just need to add two more, and that gets us to 12 pounds. So can you see, rather than having to draw things out or keep counting on and actually spend a bit of time going and adding each bit, if we can spot straight away that 6 and 4 make 10, then this calculation becomes very straightforward. Right, one more example before your turn. 40 take away 26. Now, this one's a bit more tricky and there's lots of different ways of working it out and you might not use number bonds to work this out, but I want to show you how you can use the number bonds that you know to 10 again to work this one out. I drew something out like this. Now, again, we're talking about doing this in your head, but I've drawn something out to just show you what was going on in my head. So I started on 40 and I knew I had to take away 26. Well, it's easy to take away two tens, we just need to count back in tens. 40, 30, 20. And now I'm left with just six to take away because I'm taking away 26 overall. So the calculation I'm doing is 20 take away six. And I can use my number bond 10 to work out the answer to that. Because if I know that four add six makes a 10, then I know that my answer to 20 take away 6 is going to have to have a 4 in the 1s because a 4 and a 6 are going to add together to make a 10. And then we've got one more 10 here. Now, you might be able to do that in your head already and you might prefer to do it a different way. But just by drawing on the things we know, 20 take away 6 was a lot easier for me because I didn't have to count all the way back from 20 six times. I didn't have to change it around and do it a different way. I just knew, well, I know that 4 add 6 is 10, so 14 add 6 is 20, so I know that 20 take away 6 gives me 14. So just another example of how you can draw on the number bonds that you know to help you. Okay, time for you to have a go. So here's question one. This is just to get us warmed up and practicing thinking about our number bonds and how they work. So click pause here, have a go at these questions. They shouldn't take you very long. If you want to, you can do these ones just in your head and just write down your answers. You don't have to copy each bit down, but it shouldn't take you too long either way. So click pause here and have a go. Right, let's talk about these answers then. So this is just some nice simple number bonds to 10 and 20. 4 and 6 is 10, 4 and 16 is 20. 5 add 5 is 10, 5 add 15 is 20. 10 equals 9 and 1, 20 equals 19 and 1, 10 equals 3 add 7, and 20 equals 7 add 13. Okay, so hopefully that's got you a bit warmed up and you're thinking about your number bonds now. Let's have a look at question two. So I've got eight calculations on the screen for you. I've got five over here and three slightly more tricky ones over here. Now, all of these calculations, you might be able to use your number bonds to help you think about the answer. So I would encourage you, if you can, to try doing these calculations in your head. Try doing it without having to write anything down. Or maybe have a go first doing it in your head and then write it down to check. And think about your number bonds and how number bonds to 10 can help you answer these questions. These ones over here are a little bit more tricky, but still you should be able to think about how you could use number bonds to help you. So click pause here, have a go at those in your head if you can, write down your answers, click play when you're done. Right, let's talk through each of these questions. We'll talk through the answer and how you could have used number bonds to help you. So question A, 
the answer was 90. Now, here you could have used your number bonds, you could have done 7 add 3, would have given you a 10, and so now you've got 110, and then all you need to do is add 2 more to get to 3 tens, and 6 more to get to 9 tens. So your answer was 90. 30 take away 8 was 22. So again, 30 is in the 10 times table. So if you take away 8, your answer is going to end in a 2, because 8 and 2 make 10, and so your answer is 22. Here we had three numbers to add together, but actually, if you remember that 4 and 6 are a number bond to 10, 14 add 6 is 20, and then it just becomes 20 add 20, which is 40. 13 add 6, well, if you know that 14 add 6 is 20, 13 is just one less, so your answer is 19. And this one, 28 add 42, well, again, if you know that 8 and 2 is 10, then that's 10, 2 more 10s is 30, 4 more tens is 70. Okay, what about these slightly trickier ones then? So the answer to the first one was 22. Now, you could have actually used this question here to help you with this. 60 take away 30 would have got you to 30, and then you're just doing take away 8 more. So that's the same as 30 take away 8. But really, this question you just needed to think about, because you're taking away from a 10, your 8 add 2 number bond. You know that taking 8 away from something in the 10 times table will give you a number that ends in 2. So you could have counted back in 10s first and then taken away the 8 at the end. What about this one then? 24 add something equals 40. Well again this might seem a little bit tricky but actually if you think about it you can add 6 to get to the next 10, that's 30, and then you just need 10 more to get to 40. So the answer here is 16. And lastly, 25 add 36. Well, if you know that 5 add 5 is 10, then 5 add 6 is just one more. So if you do 5 add 5 is 10, 2 more 10s gets you to 30, 3 more 10s gets you to 60, and then we just need to add one more to get to 61. So well done for having a go at those. Even if you did have to write things down, and even if you didn't use your number bonds, well done for having a go. But hopefully you've seen there that you can use your number bonds to 10 in lots of different ways to just help you make calculating more efficient. Okay, let's have a look at the challenge for today. What mistake has been made here? 44 add 66 equals 100. Click pause here, think about the mistake, see if you can work out the right answer and click play when you're done. Right, let's have a look at this question then. So we need to work it out step by step because I think that's probably the easiest way to tackle this calculation. And you can see here that we've got fours and sixes. So we immediately could be thinking, okay, number bonds to 10, I know that four and six makes 10. So let's add the ones first. 4 add 6 makes 10. There we go, I've written it out. So we've done that part of the calculation. What about the next part now? Let's add the 10s. 4 10s add 6 10s. Well, that's going to be 10 10s, which equals 100. So 40 add 60 equals 100. Well, now we need to work out how much everything is all together because we were doing 44 and 66. And so we need to add our answers, 100 add 10 more makes 110. So 44 add 66 equals 110. So this is one of those ones that doing it in your head, you could probably do it quite easily, but you need to make sure that you're adding each part and really thinking about what each part adds up to and so what your total number is. But well done if you've got 110. That's it for today. We'll finish things there. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's lesson exploring how we can use number bonds to help us with our calculations. See you for the next one tomorrow.